Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're going to be looking at Psychonauts from Joker and the Thief. This Kickstarter deck was designed by graphic designer Pedro Oyarbide. He's the same guy behind a bunch of the other Joker and the Thief decks, including their original Joker and the Thief deck and Dystopia, among others. Really talented artist and his art style has sort of become synonymous with the Joker and the Thief brand over the years. But this particular deck takes a deep dive into that sort of 70s psychedelic theme, uh, the mind-altering drugs and the spirituality that sort of became a mainstay of that era. It's a really cool, interesting theme to explore and really excited to see how Pedro does with the artwork in this one. So let's get right into it. So starting out with the tuck case. The tuck case is striking and as you can see, just over the top in its detail. Borrows a lot of artistic inspiration from some of the vibrant 1970s posters. Think those movie posters like uh, Jimi Hendrix and the like. And it fills every millimeter of the box with bits of intricate detail throughout. It's kind of hard to tell, but the actual tuck case is this green color here, that matte green stock. Uh, and it's incorporated all the way through with bits of pink, black, and gold foil. So three different colors of foil in this one to create this scene that you see here. Uh, it's an art style that's known as horror vacui. It literally means fear of empty spaces. I think it's a great description of it because there's detail everywhere. Of course, you have the guru seated there meditating in the center, the skeletal character, psychonauts written in that sort of drooping, dripping font at the top, and then tons of swirls of color and detail, those bright pinks, greens, and then of course that shining gold throughout. Other little details you'll pick out as you go through, you'll see the different stars shining, or even those snakes that are curled down the sides. You get the snakes on either side, and then the Joker and the Thief logo, that JT down here at the bottom. I definitely would have liked this, maybe in even more of the neon colors, or even some of a glowing effect with a black light. I think that would have been great. But that gold, especially that bright yellow gold, still does definitely stand out on this one. On the sides, you get Joker and the Thief with more of that same detailed patterning both sides and then the design continues onto the back with another explosive scene this isn't the back side of the cards but you can see that everything all that detail we've seen is kind of exploding out of the mind of this guy down here and all of the different uh, imagination and just sort of bits of detail are all coming right out of his mind it's a really cool finish to the back here you get the palm in the center the vines running their way up the side and then a few little uh Kind of hippie-esque sayings here with the open path, life or death, and then transcend. Very cool look to this. I love the artwork and the detail on this one. And that subtle embossing just serves to enhance it just a little bit extra, give that luxury feel. Bottom has your typical ad copy for Joker and the Thief. Gives credit to Pedro as the artist. Top. This has have a nice trip. Of course, we're gonna be taking an exploration into some of the psychedelic drugs. So have a nice trip, very fitting. And then finishes out with a relatively tame tuck seal. Uh, just that post stamp style, plain white with the pink Joker and the Thief logo on it. Opening up the inner flap, get some more detailing. This time a gaping mouth with the teeth and the fangs on the top. And then the Joker and the Thief logo in psychedelic style on the smaller flaps. You get some great interior printing as well. You get a little peek at the green that's the true color of the tuck case. And then the gold foil with the human figure standing there in the center. And then the swirls of pattern all the way around. Kind of looks like a fingerprint pattern. So very cool tuck case. Definitely one of the highlights of the overall deck. Uh, and if you're a tuck fan, this one really is a standout one in my opinion. But now let's get to the cards themselves. We'll start with the back design. And here it is. So you'll see a little bit of neon color in this one, but definitely that same horror vacui style that we saw on the tuck case. We get Psychonauts top and bottom. Usually not a big fan of words on back designs, but here I think it incorporates into the art style pretty well. And then the main focus is the mirrored image of the jester dancing here in the center or the guru, uh, the skeletal figure with the book in one hand and the keys in the other. The flames are kind of whipping off of him. Uh, the several arms, you can see it's a, I guess it's a six armed character, the three arms on that side. And then the swirls of color in the background. 
The yellow you see here is metallic, so it's kind of a yellow gold color. And then you get some of those pinks and then kind of a muted green there as well. Now this one, despite the hits of pink in here that you think maybe it'll react under a black light like some of those 70s posters, it doesn't. I think that's a little bit of a shame. Again, kind of like the tuck case, I would have liked if they, I would have been fine with them getting rid of the metallic inks and instead replacing it with all fluorescing colors. I think that would have been an amazing effect and a great fitting thematic addition to this one. But still some great artwork on that back design. All right, your two Jokers. Joker and the Thief often does this. They replace the Jokers with a Joker card and a Thief card, uh, featuring basically the same pose, but one of them as the Jester Guru sitting there in the middle with his meditative state. And then the Thief features the same character, but this time with that trademark Thief bandana and the flames coming up on his back. So nice artwork on these. Again, nice use of the metallic ink to really give it that extra bit of glow. And then you get a pair of ad cards rather than a gaff card or anything like that. You get the Psychonauts card with that swirling rainbow pattern with the four pips in there. And then an all metallic gold card with the Joker and the Thief logo in the middle. So there's your ad cards. All right, now on to the four aces. So the spade, Ace of Spades, definitely the power ace in this one. And it's a huge, bright, colorful spade pip mixing into those muted greens, the fluorescent pinks, and then those metallic golds once again. Psychonauts, name of the deck, beautifully incorporated in the center here. That lock representing sort of the unlocking of the subconscious mind, and then the open book with the J and T for Joker and the Thief. Uh, nice little extra detail in here. You can see the swirling snake curling its way up the sides with a pair of heads meeting there in the center. And then you get a regular black Pippin Index in the corner, a bit more of a sort of 70s hippie inspired, uh, inspired font, but pretty nice and easily readable. And then a pretty standard Pip in the corner. The other three aces feature custom artwork on the pips. That's a bit of a first. Joker and the Thief doesn't usually do full custom pips on the other aces, uh, but they did on this one. So you get the flaming chalice on the diamond, the uh, three eyes there on the club, and then the skull and flower on the heart. And you can see the red color on the red cards is replaced with that bright pink. There's your four aces. Uh, number cards are, you know, after all of the other explosions of colors that we looked at, number cards go to a very standard place. So the pips are just plain, solid black. Pretty standard look to them. Slight customization. You can see the sort of a little bit rougher hand-drawn feel to them. But overall, pretty standard pips, standard layout. Nothing too special to speak of. The only real difference on these the font and the index, and the fact that the red cards have been replaced with that bright, vibrant pink. Uh, so I, again, would have liked to have seen a little bit more done with the pips on these, but there's plenty of color to go around in this deck, so it's not too big of a complaint overall. And if you want to make this as a usable deck, certainly doesn't hurt to have easy to use number cards. So there's your hearts. And then we get into the quartz. Now all the quartz beautifully illustrated in that classic kind of hand-drawn style, uh, very familiar to any fans of previous Joker and the Thief decks or Pedro Oyarbide. You'll definitely recognize the style. And of course, all the characters have a symbolic place in psychedelic culture. So the Jacks are all representative of some of the different mind-altering drugs that believers would use to achieve their states of altered consciousness. So the Jack of Spades kicks it off with a reference to ayahuasca. That's a plant that's brewed into a tea by shamans of the Amazon rainforest. And you see him brewing the tea there, dropping the leaves into the water in the center. So kind of a classic style court, but then with the elements mixing in drug culture in the center. Uh, next up, the Jack of Diamonds turns to Native American culture for a look at the peyote cactus that many of the indigenous cultures used in their ceremonies. So you can see the cactus there in the middle. And then the Jack of Clubs features magic mushrooms. You can see the pile of mushrooms there. And I love the wild look in his eyes as he eagerly pops one of them into his mouth. A uh, cool little touch on that one. So definitely not his first mushrooms he's eaten today. And then finally, the Jack of Diamonds pays tribute to LSD. So it's usually applied as a liquid on the backs, backs of these sort of stamps here in the middle. You can see he's peeled one off and just getting ready to pop a little bit of LSD there. So very cool. I love the illustrations in the courts. And I think it's interesting you managed to kind of give a nod to classic royalty, but at the same time, pulling in some heavy customizations to fit into the psychedelic theme. 
Now, a couple of things for me, the swirling outfits look a lot better on the pink or the red cards than they do on the black cards. I think the black cards a little bit muted and almost boring for my tastes. So I like it a lot better on the uh, red cards. I think that was a lot better incorporation of the color there. And for me, I think the use of the classic quartz with the drug theme or that psychedelic theme, I could have done without the classic quartz styling, you know, the crowns and things like that. Now, I think just going full on with the psychedelic theme might've been a little bit better, but overall still kind of a cool and unique look. All right, so now turning to the Queens, the deck gets a lot more highly symbolic, uh, featuring quartz that all represent the divine feminine. Uh, there's also a mirror motif carried through the Queens in a subtle, but a really kind of cool nod to their 2018 Maidens deck. So the Queen of Spades here, for example, you can see he's holding a broken mirror, uh, represents suppression of self and the broken mind. And of course, she's smoking a little bit there on the sides. You can see the wisps of smoke going up. Very nice uh, chord on that one. Uh, Queen of Diamonds is holding a diamond or a gem there in her hand. And it's pretty much a literal reference to the Beatles classic song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Uh, that song was famously rumored to be about drugs because of the, uh, the initials LSD, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Uh, so kind of an interesting little literal reference on that one. And you can see the mirror again on the scepter there. And then the Queen of Clubs uh, represents self-awareness as she confronts her own mortality pretty literally. You can see that with the skeletal uh, reflection in the mirror. So she's confronting her mortality there. And then finally is the Queen of Hearts who represents confrontation of self. Uh, in this one, she's holding the eye in one hand representing spiritual awakening and then the snake in the other hand representing it as, or as a symbol of her negative past self. Uh, so kind of weighing the two in her hands. So very cool. I love the tie back symbolically to the uh, Maiden's deck. I think that's just a cool little touch in this one. All right, and then finally are the kings who are in the embodiment of spiritual mastery and depictions of real world spiritual figures. So the King of Spades depicts Alan Watts. He was a famous uh, spiritual writer and speaker who believed in the interconnectedness of all mankind and the world around us. Uh, smoked a pipe, so that's uh, so the face and the pipe there kind of nods to him there. Uh, and he was a big follower of Eastern philosophy, so you have the uh, yin yang symbol there in the middle. And then the King of Diamonds, this is probably my favorite card in the deck, definitely the most fitting into the theme. This one references Osho. Osho. Uh, he was an Indian mystic who founded the Rajneesh movement. He lived in this, he lived a really lavish lifestyle in this huge compound with his followers. As you can see the jeweled chalice there and a lot of his followers were often armed. So that's the meaning of the gun there in the center. But this one I think just captures the theme better than most of the cards in the deck. Next up is the King of Clubs. This is one of the first champions of psychedelic drug use. Uh, this one is Terrence McKenna from the Western United States. Uh, so big fan of using psychedelic drugs, both uh, recreationally and kind of as a way to explore your inner self. And then finally is the more abstract suicidal king. So rather than a uh, literal guru, this one goes back to kind of a more uh, figurative approach here. And he represents everybody who puts their hearts and even their lives on the line in pursuit of self-improvement spiritually. And you can see him there with quite literally the heart torn out and in one hand and then the of course classic suicidal king pose in the other and that is the king of hearts so cool looks at the cards overall like i said i could have done without the royalty mixed in with the theme and maybe just gone all in on the theme but still some cool look on this one and especially on those red cards some interesting use of color and that is the deck uh, as far as handling printed by uspcc uh, on their crushed stock. So you're used to the handling of those. Not too much to say about these, but they do handle well overall. So no complaints on that front. Uh, overall thoughts on the deck. I think it's a really fun deck. Uh, you know, a few things that I would have changed, I think would have made it a great deck. In particular, maybe more heavy use of some fluorescent inks with a black light reactivity. I think that would have been an amazing touch on this one in particular. But overall, a really great, interesting and different uh, addition to the Joker and the Thief line. So no regrets on this deck at all. Definitely one worth picking up when they show up on the site. So anyway, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this look at Psychonauts. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews, more unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see, and I'll see you for the next one.